My name is Franz Vermeulen, um, born in Holland, living in Aruba now for 13 years. I retired at the aquarium shop in Holland and live now here, going out sometimes to collect fishes in South America. For me, this island is a paradise. How long have you been in the aquarium hobby? Already as a kid, about three years old, I saw the fishes in the aquarium of my father. And they impressed me, always. As I was six years, I had my own aquarium and breed guppies like, and, and platys, fishes that live beer us. And I was very excited as I was seeing these fishes breeding and, and giving birth to other small fishes. Who got you into the aquarium hobby? It was my father that got me into the hobby. The killifishes also were his first fish. He was um, having a bed for a, a case of beer that, he was po that it was possible for, to him to breed uh, um, Afiosemion australe. And the, the guys in his uh, aquarium club, he, they told him that it was not possible to breed these fishes. And he told me the story how he succeeded in breeding. And that was for me the first encounter with killifish. And I can tell you, as I was having my first Afiosemion australe, I, I stopped going to school um, and, and, and watched my fish breeding in my aquarium because it was so exciting for me. The school, um, I, I was um, um, faking that I was sick. So I could see and breed the fish and that was my first encounter with the killifish. This is the place where the fish goes in. This is just on top that no, that no peat is can be propelled out. So in this layer the fish can lay the eggs. in the feet is very difficult. It depends by species. Some species you can even with my method not get the eggs very good visible. But some species you can only see the eggs after I rock them in a washing ladder like this one. This you can buy uh, in, in a car store to, to clean the car. Charmoin or washing ladder. I put the peat in here. I roll the peat between the two layers of the washing ladder and now you cannot see the eggs yet, but in one minute they start to come up because by rolling you roll off the peat particles from the peat, from the eggs, and Many, many eggs now are visible. I put the, the 25 of these, mostly a little bit more for the reason of losing some eggs. Put them in that little canister. If I have enough, I take a little bit of the peat, also with eggs, to be sure that there are no, no less than 25 shake them, put them, wait, I need to make them, mark them, like this, write down what is in it, in this case it is Renova Oscari, Thirty eggs collected. Nineteen, twelve, twelve. 
and then I seal this bag with the peat in it, ready to be sent to the people who asked for it. I cannot send fish from this island because the postal service is very slow and the heat is killing fish, but I can send eggs during the whole day, during the whole year. In the, in the cellar of my house, the, the house of my father, I had the six aquariums and I put in killifish there and to get them it was very difficult at that time so I was hitchhiking to uh, a, a, a lady uh, that that lady was living 80 kilometers from me and as a 13 year old kid I was hitchhiking to uh, Gorikum in Holland to buy with the little money I had one pair of killifish what makes you different than most aquarium hobbyists? Ah, that's a good question. I don't know if I am so different. The only thing is that I am excited to go also find these fishes. And since 89, 1989, I went to Guyana several times. That was at that time a country not known by anybody. Uh, but there was a guy in 1909 that was uh, collecting in that country and this Mr. Eigenman was for me a, a, a really a big discoverer. He dis does not only collect but also described a lot, lot of fishes in a book and it was so exciting for me to follow his steps in that country that um, I went there the first time in 1989, as I said already, but I was not able to find any killifish. And you, I was three weeks there. I took somebody who knew the country with me from Holland, who was living in Holland, but I didn't find any fishes because I was finding, uh, trying to find them in the creeks and in the rivers not knowing that these fishes are not living in creeks and rivers, they are living only in the small waters aside. And one time I was in a gold digger camp, I, I had to put my somewhere, and I went to a place that was a swampy place where the other guys from the gold digger camp put their shit and did their uh, uh, thing. And I am sure now that I was sitting on the place where the fish lives that I look for. So after this disaster of three weeks going through hell, um, I decided to go back once and that became seven times in total. And the, this, the first time I went back was in 1991. And then I was very successful because then I know where to look for these fishes. And this is, is one of the reasons these fishes are never uh, collected and discovered in all the time years before. Many people go there for seeing uh, flowers like orchids like, and fishes and plants uh, and birds, but all the expeditions were not able to discover these fishes that live in between the leaves in, on the forest floor, next or close to rivers, close to uh, little creeks. And they are able to jump to those places over land in the night if, if, if the temperature is low and if the, 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 the moist is high. And on, the, on this way they find niches niches there where they, where they can live and they live there um, to eat the mosquito larves that are um, put in by the mosquitoes in those places and they also live there because other fish cannot enter and no predators can enter their habitat but scientists didn't find this fish only Eigenmann did this is what people get. Um, they have to open the bag, uh, store it with more uh, peat to avoid that it is in too small area 
and they have to store them for about six months for this species. Uh, so keeping killifish is also necessary that you are a very patient, patient somebody. If you are not patient, you cannot keep killifish. Certainly not the, the ones that have a long incubation period. Which is your favorite fish species? Rivless, uh, now divided in several other uh, uh, genera, uh, was from the beginning on my favorite fish. Rivless, the fish that can jump, that seek places all over, uh, that find niches, those fish were my favorite and are still are, still are. Why are they your favorite fish? Because they are so able to survive. They are able to survive on places no other fish can survive. And, and that was also one of the first fishes that uh, I, I started to love because they can jump. And I, once I had a couple of those and I didn't close the, the top of my aquarium and next day, and I, I, I can tell you I was hitchhiking 80 kilometers for those fishes, those two, and, and the next day they lay on the ground. You can imagine how I did feel uh, uh, at that time as a little boy. France, what do you feed your fish? I breed the, these mosquitoes here in the water of my septic tank, and uh, I pump out the water in this, in this tank here, two of them, and then I put in some yeast and some flour, mix it, and in one or two days they have a lot of eggs on top of the water, and within a week I have a lot of mosquito larves that I feed before they hatch, of course. And uh, in this way I can bring my food to the fish, because I, I, there is no water here but, but contains live food, so I cannot catch food for my fish, and they only like live food. I breed also white worms, um, and for that, and I give also for the fish, uh, I give the bigger fish, I give also a uh, heart, heart of uh, cow. So the mosquito larves are the life savers for my fish. This is my favorite question of them all. Uh, what makes you tick? All right, let me explain myself better. What, what drives you to go all these places and explore and look for new fish species? And um, why do you explore? What makes you tick? Many people think that it is to discover new species. But in fact, I want to follow the steps from people that did that before before me, like Alexander von Humboldt, like Wallace. Those people explored in, in the late 80s those countries without having anything, no knowledge about where they go. That was a, really an adventure. And I wanted to, to find those fishes again and see them alive, bring them for my camera and, and give access to the, their beautiful colors and their behavior to people around the world. And for that reason, I, I went into those countries. Not to find only new species, which I did of course, but to find those ones that are already known, but only were dead, uh, stuffed in alcohol in Musia, and nobody know what they look like in the real. So I brought many, many fishes that were discovered in the late 1800 or 19, beginning of 1900. I brought, the, brought them for the camera and brought them to the people and, dis, and distributed them also to, through the world. And that was the tick that I had. To, to store them, the eggs for other people that want to have this species, I store them in this little file check if no eggs remain every egg is alive and put them away 
also with the name of the fish and the day of connecting. And doing so I can spread out the species I, I found in Venezuela, uh, in this case uh, on the Isla Raton, spread out all over the world. Venova, Oscar. A beautiful fish. Do you have a curious anecdote from your expeditions? Something you'd like to share? The first the first anecdote that comes to your mind when I'm saying this. In, in Holland, if there's some animal running over, over the road, you try to avoid to hit it. But in Guyana, any animal that is living and you can eat it, you, you will try to hit it uh, because then you have some food at the end of the day. So once we went on a sand dirt road, in Guyana and we saw uh, Amadello running over the road and the guy next to me I was on the on the wheel but the guy next to me is at and that was the owner of the car hit it hit it and I not thinking about the poor animal drove the car to win the, to into the ditch at the side to hit the, the, the poor animal and we did and that night we eat Amadello beautiful and dark meat so after that and I was driving with this guy and we saw an animal always the first thing we, we, we hit it hit it that was fun but not so good for the animal but and I put it here in fact I put it there because it takes a long time after a while the, the, I move them downwards and if they are here I can put them in water most of the time because you see this one is from 6, 3, 12 it's 9 months already or uh, more and it's the last one I have from that species so I have to put them on water, in water now and for that I have a little thing Take some water. It is dry peat, but the eggs are still inside. You cannot see them because they are dark now, because the fish is in there. Sometimes I have to check before I, um, I put them in the water if the eyes are eyed up, eh, what they call. If you see the iris through the, the looking through you to the to the cambium, to the egg shell, then they are ready for um, coming out. And most of the time it takes only two hours, one or two hours for them to, ha to hatch. <coughs> and then you see like like this here. So, I pour the water, stir the little thing that the eggs go down, and put it away for waiting that it is um, the eggs come up uh, it will hatch in within about one or two hours. Eggs are heavier than it feet, so they fell down. Which do you think has been your greatest achievement in the aquarium hobby? I think the greatest achievement was to bring all those new species and, and, and known species um, onto a site that I made, a site that is called It Range Fishes, uh, which and that It Range Fishes .net, in fact, because I wanted to bring all those nice color fishes and all the stories I had, including the the history of where the fish was found and in one side together because many people uh, put something on a special fish in a side or in a what we call now the social uh, log uh, social media 
but nothing was together. And I put aside with all the fishes, only from South America, because you have to make choices in your life, all the fishes from South America, try to find um, them, breed them, make them grow to adult men, and make a nice photograph of them. Because I live on an island, it's very difficult to do that. I cannot go to friends that have fishes and make photographs there. I have to order or I have to exchange eggs. They send the, the eggs to me um, because I live on this island and the postal office is not so uh, very quick. I cannot order fish or send fish to people, but the eggs, and that's the nice thing of killifish, especially the annual killifishes, you can send the eggs in a little bag with peat and all over the world. So yeah, I exchange with all people in the world these eggs. I have species other people have, don't have. And in this way, I can get access to those species and make photographs. So that is to put aside and complete aside, it was a, a still ongoing job. And it took me from 2001 till now, 2013, to get it to what it is. And that, I think, is my greatest achievement in the hobby. I think you cannot see the fish, it's too small. But at a certain moment, I take out the water with a little fish in it. I do that like this. Again, take a new one. I pour over the water, including the little fish. Yeah, there they come. Chase them out. All right, many, many small babies. I check if everything is, everyone is out, and then I store the peat again if that is necessary for the species. If there are still eggs undeveloped in it, I store it again in one of those things and put them away for a month or two weeks more. Is there anybody in the aquarium hobby that you look up to or admire? And there's only one name that peaks all over, and that's Darwin. And because of him, I think we have knowledge about how life goes and how things evolve. He was not the first one that said that, but he was the first one that brought it out to the world. And because of his discoveries and his, uh, pre uh, let's say, breaking work, um, I was so interested also in nomenclature, in how, how you call, how you describe a fish, how you name a fish, how do people do that? And that was so interesting for me that as I was finding new species, I wanted to do that myself also. But I am not a, a, I'm not a graduated student. I never did study biology. So I had to work out all those things myself, ask people. Um, and that was a process of many, many years. And I had good teachers, uh, people that were known in this world. And they told me, Franz, if you think that this thing is new and you can prove it and you put it on paper, then it is new. And if it is not good, if somebody say, after all, it is wrong, that's not a problem. So I started to do that and, and started to describe my first fish in 2000. And that was Riflis Torrenticola from Guyana. Then, I take one of these plastic parts, which are made from things that you are put on the on the, the, the in the in the supermarket. You get your your meat, cheese, and things on this. I cut them, and this is floating, and it always goes with the species, with the eggs, and also with the young fish. And afterwards, they are put with the fish to the aquarium where they belong. 
So this way I don't need to put stickers on, it's all the ugly. Um, I just take out this and you see all the places here with all the names of all the fish. Sometimes you see only a number. Most of the time those are uh, fishes that are not having a name. They need a name and they are numbered after the place where we found the fish. Do you have a final goal in the hobby? What do you see your destiny in the hobby being or where are you heading? My age is 63. I forgot to mention that in the early thing. And, and somebody lives not forever. Uh, the sight I have, the thing what I see as the best thing I made, uh, is not for, uh, for, the, for my entire life. Uh, after I will die, the site will die too. Nobody will pay and it disappear from the net. So my goal and my ultimate goal is to make a book with all those fishes nice in color. Not only a book with the fishes only, but also the stories behind it. And in fact, I want to have make four books. But that is a big achievement and I want to start with one first and if that is a success I will start the second one and it's not to get rich it's not to get famous I want to put the knowledge that is there for the people after me and I hope they will enjoy it and I hope I will finish the books before I die so and that was what I do and put them away. Feed them nice every day, change water every day or one or two days. Here you see a fish from Suriname. I clean them every day or at least once or two times a week. It depends how many fish are in. careful that I don't pour away the fish. I chase them back. Most of the time I change 90% of the water or more. Fresh water. Back on the place. That's what I do. <laughs> do you have any advice for your fellow hobbyists around the world? The only thing is that you have to have the love for your for your, what you are doing. That's only. And um, if you are like me, I, I, I'm sure that you have the love for what you are doing. So, for for those who want to know what to do, go what you feel you have to do. No more. I, that's not a good advice, but I think um, do what you like.